So in this video, we're going to turn this into this. So I was durability testing this two-piece centre drive shaft conversion and this happened. So the rear bulkhead completely exploded and it's so bad that even the diff came out. <laughs> oh, that was awful. That's it, it's getting it now. <laughs> Oh no, look, there's a diff in there, look. So in this video, we're gonna fix it, spruce it all up a little bit, paint up a new body for it, and then take it out for a rip. We've also got these new lipos here from Banggood that we're gonna try out. Oh no, <laughs> just found more damage. But no big deal, we have spares. Oh look, down here, there's more stuff we gotta fix. Here's my silver YouTube play button that you get once you pass 100,000 subscribers. And at a million subscribers, you get a gold one. So guys, if you like these videos, subscribe. Because look, 65% of you viewers are not subscribed. And subscribing's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. And also, smash the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Because we've got plenty of cool stuff coming up soon. I finally ordered all the parts to finish this monster truck. And it's gonna weigh around about five tons and do 0 to 60 in around four seconds, which for something that size is pretty amazing. It's getting tires that are like 66 inches tall, 1500 horse engine going in there, 30 inch travel shocks on there, and the Chevy C10 body, so it's gonna look a little bit like this. And yeah, we're gonna paint it in our legendary red. So this is the same chassis that the Gravedigger team uses, and I've never built a monster truck before, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, but hopefully together, we can figure it out. And then I'm also hoping to move out of this workshop, hopefully in the next few months. I'm looking for a new house with a bit of land and a workshop on site so we can build RC tracks in the garden and all that kind of stuff. But guys, I'm looking every single day and something perfect has got to come up. So as soon as something comes up, guys, we're gonna go and have a look at it. And then we're gonna supercharge the Lambo. So yeah, subscribe and smash the bell so you don't miss any of it. And we've got helicopters to fly, we've got helicopters to build. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's start wrenching. Oh dear, look at that damage. Oh no, that one's rounded off in there, look. No. When in doubt, give it a clout! Whew. Look at that guy, so far, that centre drive shaft is still perfectly straight. This has got to be one of my favourite X-Max modifications. Guys, if you want to know where you can get all the upgrades from on this car, and where you can get the car from, there's going to be a link to all of that down below. So for now, we can put this to one side, and we can now focus on this lot. Oh, what? I was hoping for this reaction. <laughs> oh no, not another rounder. Oh yes, we got it. So a lot of you guys always ask about these power tool tips. Well, the ones that I use are these ones here. If you want to know where you can get them from, there's going to be a link down below. And then these ones here are my favourite hand tools. There's going to be a link to these down below too. And when doing screws up with these, it's always best to do them up most of the way than do the last little bit up by hand. Otherwise, you run the risk of stripping out all your threads. 
Beautiful. I see a lot of people on the internet often ask about this little bit of play that you have on the spur gear. It really doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't affect it at all. So a few of you guys, in a couple of videos ago, you said that my X-Max doesn't seem to be as fast as it used to be. So there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is that I put on a small opinion gear. I did run this on a 19 tooth at one point, and... In the summer, it does get a little bit too hot, so I geared it down. Also, I was running it on these Power Hobby wheels here, and the stock one's a little bit smaller. So, because I ran it again on the stock tyres, that slowed the truck down a little bit. So we're going to chuck on the 19 tooth pinion again, and hopefully it's going to wake it up and make it a little bit faster. Now, it's worth noting, guys, a lot of you guys ask me what gearing I run. I normally run in between a 17, an 18, and a 19 tooth pinion, and a 50 tooth spur gear. But... I'm running a 1600 kV motor out of a 6S X Max and running it on 8S because the 1600 kV gives it a little bit more RPM and a little bit more top speed. If you run this gearing on a stock X Max 8S motor, it's going to be a little bit on the slow side. So we're going to be running this on a 1950, so we need to put the pin into slot C. I'll tell you what, guys, I really love the X-Max motor mount system. You've got the four screws on the bottom. You've got the pin system. It means you haven't got to set any mesh. You just put the pins in the right slot, put the motor in, and all your mesh is set. Also, if you look at the X-Max motors, they're supported on both ends. And the good thing with that is, is that when you're doing jumps and you're landing really big air and the motor is slamming down onto the floor, it's supported on both sides. A lot of the other cars that the motor's only supported on one end, you end up ripping the motor off, the motor smashing into the chassis, bending the motor, destroying the motor and causing a whole load of other problems. This is the best motor mount that I've ever seen in an RC car. And um, I didn't put it in properly, so we've got to take it out again. That's better, look, it's sitting in that groove now. A lot of people complain about these pinions coming off on X-Maxes. You've got to use some really strong thread lock. I use this Loctite 270. This is actually stud lock and it's supposed to be permanent. I mean, you can get it off again. You've just got to apply a little bit of heat and it will come off again. But I definitely put quite a lot of this on there because I do not want this to come off once you're out on the field bashing. And the other thing is, if this does start coming off, what happens is, is that you ruin the flat spot on the motor. And then, once that happens, it's going to come off all the time. And the great thing about these tools here, look, they've got slots in there. So you can put in another wrench and you can really tighten stuff up really tightly. Beautiful. And the good thing with these X-Maxes, guys, is that all the parts that are most likely to break are really cheap. Next, we can put the diff back in, and I like to use this waterproof marine grease. And the idea of that is that if water gets in there, the water doesn't really mix in with the grease as much as normal grease would. Uh-oh, just noticed a little bit more damage. Subscribe. Uh-oh, got a bent shock shaft in that one. Oh yeah, that is really tight. Maybe not a bent shock shaft though. Might be something else going on in there. Ah, so the shock shaft looks perfect. So I can only assume that either the body's bent or something's up with a piston. I think it's a piston, guys. No idea what happened to that. Maybe it's got a crack in it. That is very strange, because it looks fine, but obviously it isn't. So I've got a brand new one here. So shaft in, look at that, perfectly smooth. Next washer, then piston. Oh yes, that slides down there, lovely. And lastly, nuttage. Oh, look at that, moves lovely. It probably would have been easier if we would have taken the bottom off, but oh well, it's done now. Shock oil back in, I know some of you guys are gonna be cringing and crying that I'm putting the old shock hole back in. But guys, chill, it's just a toy. And 
you're not sitting in it. And then we can go ahead and top it up just to get it up to the top. I know some of the racers out there are going to be cringing, but I don't care. It's my toy and I can do with it what I want. Oh, hold on. Beautiful. Beautiful. So here's all the parts that we broke in that last bashing. So the complete rear bulkhead, rear shock tower, steering plate, this little piece here that goes underneath the bulkhead, and a shock piston. Guys, it's probably around about $30 or $40 maybe to replace all that. So for a whole day out fun, I don't think that's too bad. I maybe break about two of these a year. It's no big deal. It's a little bit of work fitting it on, but guys, this is my favorite all-time basher. And if you haven't got one, you should definitely get one. So next, let's paint up the body shell. So this body here is the Proline Raptor. I'm gonna put a link to this body down below if you wanna know where we can get it from. So next, we're gonna stick on the window masks. Then we're gonna rough up the paint surface so the paint's got somewhere to stick to. Then we're gonna degrease it. And then we're gonna paint it red. And once the red's dried, we're gonna go over the top of it with some white, because that's gonna make the red pop more. So here's a body that we backed with black and it makes it a bit duller. And then if you look at this one here, we backed it with white, it just makes that red pop a lot better. Oh guys, this is gonna look epic! Waffle, waffle, waffle! So it's gonna look a lot shinier. It's got this plastic film on there. We've got to peel that off, but we're gonna do that last. So next, we're gonna stick on some drywall tape and some shoe goo to the inside of the body shell. And what that does is makes the body last probably about 10 times longer. I've done it to that, 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 that. Anyway, let's get it on and then you'll see. So next, we need to get a little bit of protection on there. So I've got this rear boot lip, whatever you want to call it, to put on there. Trouble is, this one here is made for the stock body. So we've got to have to cut it out a little bit. Also, I've got these RPM roof bars here to protect the roof a little bit. And don't forget, guys, a link to everything in this build is down below. Check it out guys, that looks absolutely epic. So I now run these IC5 connectors and these LiPos come with XT60s so we've got to change them over. And this plastic part here has got a habit of breaking when you're landing hard jumps sometimes. So we're just gonna put a bit of heat shrink over the top of that and hopefully that is gonna protect it. Boom! All right, let's take it for a rip. Oh, we got snow, but that won't stop us. What the hell is this? <laughs> oh, look, we got Claire in, in the house.
Claire's got a mini max on the go. <laughs> <laughs> Tumble wumble footage. on the face. Here's all Ian's toys look. Got his Crayton, his Savage. Yep. Mini Max. And... Backup Bash will win this one, bro. And where's the X Max? That's at home. <laughs> Oh no, my new body. Oh look. Guys, I didn't fully shoe goo it. I ran out of shoe goo and didn't actually do it around. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> so there we go, just fixed it up. Just put a lot more shoe goo on there, put a bit more drywall tape on there, repaired the crack. It's not perfect, but it's going to make the body see another day. And guys, these X Maxes are just so epic. I mean, everyone that loves RC cars and loves bashing should definitely have an X Max in their arsenal. I'm going to put a link down below where you can get an X Max from. There's going to be links down below to the lipos that we use. They work perfectly. There's going to be links down below to everything else. But for now, guys, click on one of these videos here and I will see you over there in a minute.